we are we are here to discuss the classes that we teach in project management at Cal State Dominguez Hills. This is a part of the extended education program. So we usually are on the extreme side of the uh, campus on main campus, but we also offer classes in Vedana Beach. So what I would like to discuss tonight with you is the prospects of these classes, what we teach, what you can expect, and of course, you know, we can be open for question and answers. First, I, I would like to explain to you that project management has, is not a new field. It started in our country, the growth expanded rapidly after the Second World War, and <clears throat> our engineers got together and created what we call today, today a project management institute. So the PMI, is now become a global organization. We have members from almost every part of the world. Whenever I travel overseas, I get to see people. I get to see people in Asia. I get to see people in Europe. And the PMI has expanded a lot. Project management is a concept that was developed by five engineers. And it's been used by almost every practical company that I can think of that is engaged in five major fields. The first field is obviously the field that I work in, and that is the field of aerospace. We have at least seven companies in Southern California that employs uh, over 70,000 employees. Just to give you an example, the companies like Raytheon, companies like uh, Boeing, which is right across from the airport, companies like Aerospace Corporation, companies like SpaceX, and I can go on. But <clears throat> the point here is that the project management has expanded in several other fields. The first field that I talked about is the aerospace. This, the, the other two fields that has done a, a lot of growth in the last 40 years is the field of information technology, IT, what we call programming, software, uh, working on, on the product line, and then, of course, the construction industry has always used project management. The field is now growing so much that it's gone to other parts of the business world. That is, in healthcare, we have a lot of students that come from healthcare. I have taught students from the entertainment industry, motion pictures. I have taught classes to students who are actually in the working for the major projects for Caltrans. I have taught classes to our students uh, who have come from the harbor, the Los Angeles Harbor. We, we undertake all kinds of construction. So all in all, in today's economy, the project management is used almost in 25% of our total GNP, 25%. Now 25% is a lot of growth in terms of having jobs. Uh, the PMI published an article recently that says that we will have an excess of 10 million jobs across the world. Now, today is not that day to talk about because we've gone through some rough times, but as the market comes back and as we come back in, in working, we will see a growth, continuous growth in project management. I have been teaching project management at our campus alone for nine solid years. And I have been teaching project management in my professional career for over 16 years. All in all, I bring, it, I bring to you over 30 years of experience from working in the aerospace, working in the fields of, of defense contracts, working in the aviation industry. So my list of interests and, and hobbies have included the, just not working for aerospace companies, but also uh, sharing my knowledge. Here you are seeing pictures of two gentlemen. Obviously, the gentleman who's standing, his name is Mr. Tamil Wilkins. He is one of our instructors. And the one that you're seeing next to him, it's myself. So I do come with a project management experience, hands-on experience, and also what we call a background in practicing project management. Uh, Mr. Wilkins has worked over 30 years his expertise comes from construction business, 
but he has taught, he has taught classes in both private and public sectors. Uh, he actually has gone out as a consultant and worked in many fields. Uh, speaking to myself is I have been working over 30 years. Um, majority of my work was with the Boeing Space uh, Satellite Systems in El Segundo. And then I worked for at least 10 more years in the aviation industry. I'm currently working for Honeywell Aerospace and the company that we make all kinds of aviation products that goes into every airplane. I do have a degree in engineering, also an MBA. I have my doctorate in education from Pepperdine University and I also have a PMP project manual professional. So we both bring, Tamo and myself, we both bring lots of hands-on experience and we usually direct and help our students to get onto that you know, skill that we all need to have. I have frequently told our students that getting a college degree is a great thing to have, but getting a project management certification, getting a certification in Six Sigma, getting certification in Don Lean, and so on are the real key things that the employers look for today. I'm working and I have seen this over and over that when we have students who come with a background in just having a degree plus some experience or at least some education uh, background in, in taking classes in project management. Uh, the aerospace industry is always open. I do not want to you know, mis mislead you that in, in aerospace companies, we, we have the engineers who are a majority. In fact, we are the minority there. Most of the students who come from uh, business schools or people who have business background, they are the ones who make up the core concept or core team of the entire project management world. Project management has grown so much now that it's just like every day I see different fields, different organizations, different applications used everywhere. I was in Vietnam uh, in 2018 and I was able to meet a PMI chapter there. I was in India last year. I was able to meet a lot of PMPs. So my point is that project management field has grown in a, so many different ways that anyone who gets certification from our school is definitely gonna benefit. Benefit from getting a new job, benefit from getting out of the job that you're working now and opening up new venues for you. The jobs pay very good salaries in project management. You have to get experience in understanding project management. Okay, so what we offer here at Cal State Deming Sales is we have project management certification. We also have what we call PMP exam preparation. And the third part we teach a part of the project management program is project scheduling. The first part, project management certification, is the key part that is used in every industry that I, I, I explained to you. Finance, construction, IT, energy, government, aerospace, healthcare. In fact, when President Obama was in the White House, the United States Congress passed, the Congress passed a bill that all the projects in the US government will be done using the guideline that Project Management Institute PMI has created. So if you join this uh, you know, classes for the next 20 plus weeks, and you wanna get your exams, uh, once you pass through that, you will have plenty of opportunities. So let me explain to you one more time. We have three unique ways of getting you the project management experience. I mean, the education. The first one is to go into the core classes. The core classes we follow the textbook that has been created by PMI. We call it PIMBA guide, which stands for Project Management Body of Knowledge. Usually it's done in about 13 chapters. We teach you every possible chapter in the textbook. And after 20 plus classes, each consisting of three hours, we roughly provide you 60 plus hours of training. And we go through a very thorough way of explaining to you what project management is all about. If you haven't in the business school before, and if you have taken classes in the business, it, you probably have taken a class in operations management where we actually teach project management as a part of that. So project management is not a new course or new, it's just that we here teach you every possible chapter that's in the book. So how the program is, is laid out is what we call a project management certification program. A uh, few things that you must notice here, folks, that you have to 
essentially complete the classes which we offer. The classes that we offer have, uh, you know, different dates on different dates. And now that we are going online because of the environment in which we are, we, we have classes offered online also we just we just switch our regular classes which we used to teach in face to face temporarily to online classes and that might go on for a while but the benefit of this classes is we we meet online from nine to noon on saturday and of course in redondo beach we'll be meeting from six to nine on a weekday and once you have these classes you complete five courses right so we start with the first course we talk about it. It's the introduction and overview in project management. All of our classes are, all of our classes are offered uh, with three hours instructions. So the introduction and overview PMX 900 is the only class that we have two sessions, two Saturdays or one full Saturday from, from, from nine o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, but all the other classes, remaining other classes, we have PMX 901, say for example, uh, through 2, 903, and 904. Each one of them are five weeks long. So five times three is 15 hours each class that you have. And so you take those four and plus your introduction. So total, you get more than 60 hours. Now I'm going to explain to you why these hours are important for you. Uh, first, it provides you the fundamental knowledge of project management, right? As I mentioned to you, we talk about every possible thing that we can we can we can teach you. My way of teaching my classes is is using a lot of examples from the industry. I have worked in the industry for a long time, so I, I give you plenty of examples of what happens, how we apply it, how does this knowledge you know work for you. Whether you have a business background or you have an engineering background or you have IT background, you whatever background you have. In project teams, we do teach you everything that we need to go through. So the first class, as I mentioned here, is the first bullet is PMX 900. Okay, then we also have the schedules that we offer, as I mentioned to you, that we have schedules that are uh, offered on Monday and, 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 and Thursday, and then we also have a class we are, we are planning to offer you starting in two weeks. And we would be starting those classes either on Tuesday or Wednesday night. I would, I would want to talk about that before we go into that topic. But we offer classes various days. Uh, either you're, you're close to Redondo Beach or you would like to come to the main campus. The main campus opens at nine in the morning on Saturdays for our classes. We usually have most of our students there. And uh, there's a campus parking. You park, you know, right ne next to the buildings we have. We have registration offices available on those Saturdays also. We have registration made so easy by our department and our staff, especially the extended education is extremely helpful. Everyone that I have worked with, uh, our staff, our director, especially, and all the members of our staff, they have been very helpful to us. And we constantly communicate with us. We, we keep in, in contact with students. Now, I want to explain to you something before I jump to the next uh, part of the, 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 the classes we have. We have these classes uh, offered on campus, but most of, or all of my materials that I, I teach you is shown and, and posted on the Blackboard. Blackboard is a tool that Cal State Dominguez Hills uses, and so does many other Cal State campuses. So we use this Blackboard concept, which is a platform where we actually post our classes. And then when, when the students are ready to come, they have everything for them to have it. I'm one of the instructors that do not have asked my students to buy any book. Everything that you need to have, everything meaning your slides, your, your chapter, you know, pages, and your the end of the chapter questions and so forth. I, I use about three different sources of textbooks that I use to teach you the classes. And those are actually the most useful uh, textbooks that are found in the industry today. 
So going back to the classes, you you have to finish the the uh, the 900 series, right? So the first thing we want to do is make sure that our students have a very good understanding of projects. Now we do not expect any of you to come with any kind of background in project management because that's what we are going to teach you. We're also going to teach you about uh, your understanding your goals. We also guide you, I guide you through a lot of directions to say, you know, this is your background, this is where you can actually fit well, and, and then we, we, we encourage our students to, to go for applying in those fields. Uh, we also have a lot of, uh, you know, online materials that I use even when I'm in the classroom. So I use a lot of online resources. For example, I use a lot of company cases and we do provide you with a lot of good learning tools. The main objective for you is to, when you're done in those 20 sessions, you will have a full understanding of what project man management is all about, and that you will be ready to go work in the project management field. All I'm requesting you is that after you, you, you're done tonight, please go online and look up project management jobs, and you'll find so many of these jobs available. So with that said, that we want to make sure that you understand that this properly. We also encourage you to go and become a member of project management local chapters. We have one chapter in Los Angeles. We have a chapter in Orange County. And when you do that, you also get to know many other professionals. So we, the, these chapters meet on a monthly basis. And I have frequently talked, I have been a keynote speaker there, and I have spoken on, on various issues. One of the benefits of you going to those chapters is to understand and learn from the professional in the field and, and not just listen to us. So that has been also a great tool for students to apply and, and, and for various jobs. Okay, so what happens after you go through this thing? Uh, the outcome has to be, you should have a full grasp of the knowledge. But I'm going to give you a, 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 a even more, a better hint after what you do after 20 weeks of your intensive classes in project management. First, we do not have exams for these classes. We do not have grades for these classes. We do provide you credit or no credit. How do you get the credit? You get the credit from completing all of these classes and then coming back and understanding how to apply. Right, so they attend every class, we take the attendance. I keep my students very active and very engaged through, through every class that I teach. Uh, teaching has become my secondary job now. In fact, I teach five, five days a week plus my full-time job and I'm taking care of myself. The point I'm trying to make to you is that we wanna make sure that we use all of our passion to fully engage you into learning process. And by the time you're done, you go to step number two. And that step number two is to get, take a professional exam offered by PMI. PMI offers a lot of exams, but before I jump into that, let me scroll you through the next part of the certification program. The, this, this certification program is meant to polish, hone, add your knowledge in project management, right? Understanding for a new position. And once you have understood all these things in project management, you have, understand, you, you have understood the processes, the knowledge areas, then you prepare for yourself. The last bullet says, gain the knowledge by applying for the PMP or CAPM exam. These exams are not offered by us. These exams are offered by PMI, Project Management Institute, where you compete on a global basis. It's like getting a CPA exam or at least passing a, a you know, bar exam, or at least getting a certification in Six Sigma. These exams are tough, and we do provide a lot of thorough knowledge and, and training. So let me explain to you how these classes are broken. We essentially cover 10 knowledge areas, which is going to include 49 processes. And what we mean by this is 10 knowledge areas are the essential areas where we would teach you the fundamentals of how to apply project knowledge to actual project. Then we explain to you about the scope management, which is the scope of the project. We then take you to the time management and then cost management. 
then we go take you to the human resource management, and we take you to quality management. By the time you're done, you will have gained a good knowledge in all these 10 areas. So 10 knowledge areas meaning 10 unique chapters, each chapter dedicated to a specific field. You can learn your contract management by just taking a class in PMX 901, which is we teach you the procurement and contract management. So the point here is to understand these 10 knowledge areas. And by, by the time you understood these 10 knowledge areas, which is broken into processes. So the project, the way we do it, is broken down into five phases. We call those process phases. And the first phase, we start with what we call initiating the project. Then we try to, we go into what we call is, is planning process. The third thing we do is execution of the project plans and then the monitor and control and finally close the project. So we have five unique phases of these projects, the way we explained to you, which covers 10 knowledge areas, which is unique, 10 unique chapters, 10 unique knowledge areas, and in 10 unique fields. So you may just say, hey, by the way, I learned a whole program and I, I, all I wanted to learn was about, you know, how to manage costs and projects. There you go. So these certifications are so useful for you to know. So let's take a pause right here. So once we have finished these classes in project management, then you have a choice. And I'm going to use the word choice, please. So folks, uh, if you have any questions, please make a note of it. I will be very happy to answer all of the questions. This slide here <coughs> is we prepare you for the exams. The first exam is called Certified Associate in Project Management. And the second one is called the Project Management Professional. Here we teach you about how to prepare for the exam. So after you have gone through those 20 weeks of classes, and after you have learned those concepts, now we prepare you to become a candidate that is comparative in any field, right? So the, the CAPM exam is an exam which is offered by PMI. All you need is to show yourself you have taken classes at the campus, therefore the class, taking classes on the campus are really useful. Uh, they, they will be required by the PMI for you to apply for the exam. The second exam, which is a very tough exam, is called the Project Management Professional, PMP. And the PMP exam is now gone on a global basis, very competitive over the years. They really, <laughs> they really watch how many people get these exams through. I've had this certification for years, but once a person gets to the PMP exam, I can actually give you a guarantee that the person would never be without a job. I've never seen a person having a PMP without a job. That's how much the demand is. The, the, the outcome of getting these exams through the CAPM and PMP is we teach you the strategy of how to prepare for the exam. So these classes that we teach are in addition to the classes that you've taken core classes. You don't have to take these preparation classes, but these are going to be helpful to you because now you're not just on, 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 on the California platform or uh, local markets for the employment, you're open to markets for many other places and many people work on remote basis. I've been working remotely from home for last three weeks, four weeks now, and been teaching classes from home. So the fact is that PMP gives you that certification and that credential that you need to have. Now, if you go and look it up in, in, in indeed.com or any of these Googles, you'll find that uh, the, 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 person, the person who has a PMP will earn an average of 100 plus thousand, okay? There are jobs that they give you $120,000, there are jobs that will give you $140,000, but the PMP is that lifetime certification. All you do, all you need after you get your PMP is you hold on to it, get your professional development units, and then you do not ever lose it. Keep be, be an active PMP with PMI, and you will have a lifetime guarantee of a job. Now, the job 
does not come guaranteed to you. It's because you have learned the skill that's measured on a global basis. And, and the fact that, that we can actually use our help for working for any employer and, and any field, right? <laughs> Just because we have this project management experience. Uh, I've had three degrees, engineering, MBA, and doctorate. What has helped me the most, folks, <laughs> in, in my entire career is my knowledge and my passion for managing projects. And by the way, managing project is not easy. It's a lot of challenge, but if you want to be a person who wants to enjoy uh, how to be engaged in the industry, how to be valuable, how to be on a constant market, how to get an email from Headhunter or on the LinkedIn to say, hey, by the way, would you like to apply for this position? And these companies are worldwide, world-renowned companies. And so my point to you is that you would never lose PMP. I wanna get into the exam, what it takes for you to have qualified for the exam. So let's take on two unique exams. First one is called CAPM exam. CAPM exam needs one thing, and that is to get your 23 hours of uh, training hours from our school, right? And then you go into the exam as if you are novice, you're entering the project management field to learn about that. But if you have prior experience in managing projects such as planning and, and managing costs or managing quality functions or managing human resources, then the PMI says that if you have three years of experience, three years, and you have a college degree, you are now qualified to apply for that exam, but you still need 35 credit hours, which, which we offer again. So the first layer, which I was explaining to you, was about learning the principles of project management. That's where you're gonna apply your training, learning credits here to apply for these exams. And PMP exam that you pass, you, it'll require you to have prior knowledge of project management. I'm not saying that prior knowledge as a project manager, prior knowledge in project management, right? CAPM does not require that, uh, that you have to be working in a project management. That's your entry into the, in, into the field. But let me explain to you this. I've been working with some of the biggest employers in the world, right? And I have not seen an employer or hiring manager making the difference to say, this candidate has a CMP well, I don't want to hire this. The CAPM and PMP carries almost the same weight, except the PMP is a leadership job. From day one, they're going to assign you a project manager job. And once you go into that, you now continue to you know, make progress. And then all you do is just continue to stay in the field. It's a gradual growth. If, if I were to share with you that PDF file that PMI has gone into, that's a gradual growth over the years that you get. And the fact is that you have to make sure that you learn these concepts really well by demonstrating and passing the exam. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the other class that we also offer, Five Sundays, is offered and taught by Mr. Wilkins. And he teaches a skill to you, a project management skill we call Microsoft Project Scheduling, where we actually use Microsoft Project uh, uh, software and we train our students how to do the scheduling. Now folks, uh, scheduling is not an easy task. Scheduling is not that easy to go apply for. The person must know about the concepts of project manager, management, managing projects, understanding how to understand the scope of the work, understanding the time factor, and essentially the scheduling is to make sure that we have a proper plan, we have schedule created for the project that we wanna be su successful to. So, so scheduling is the class that we teach. Here the objective here is for, 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 for the students is to really get good at scheduling aspect. Now, many people decide to go and work as a full-time scheduling jobs, and these jobs, are very high paying jobs too. It's because it's not that easy to, for anyone to walk in there and say, I know how to schedule. The tool requires so much practice and training. 
And that's what Mr. Wilkins, uh, he, he prepares you to go through that. He has actually written the entire textbook for that. He's prepared the course concepts. He's prepared the course materials. And he's also given a very good, uh, you know, scheduled timeline for passing through uh, the, the, the training process of project scheduling. PMI also has an exam, <laughs> believe it or not, and for the person to pass through Microsoft Project Scheduling. Once the person passes that exam, the person opens another door to work in scheduling. Now, remember, scheduling is a part of the managing the whole project. Scheduling is only one of the 10 components we, we emphasize, but scheduling gets so deep into it, everything that scheduling now today's world of scheduling is, is really learned by uh, the fundamentals, how to create schedules that's going to, uh, you know, promise the project manager, the customer and the sponsor, the promise to say, you know, we will complete this project on time. So that's the third, you know, product we offer at, at Calcio and Dominguez Sales. So the first one, as I mentioned to you, is to get through project management certification, get your, you know, enough hours, uh, complete all those 10 knowledge areas, then your options after that would be to go into the exam where we also help you to prepare for the exam or and or also go for the schedule so we do have a very well-rounded uh, program at the campus and we've been very proud in, in, in following it uh who should get into project scheduling I, I'll, I will share my personal experience with you i can i would not call a project manager having knowledge of managing project without understanding the details of how to create, how to maintain, and how to control the project schedule. Project schedules can be very complex, right? Some of the projects that I have managed at Boeing used to be three, five years long. And when you have that, you have literally thousands and thousands of lines of coding and, and logic, it, it, you, you need to have that. So who should have project uh, scheduling knowledge, everyone who is in project management profession should have that experience. But especially those who are wanting to go in scheduling alone, specifically in scheduling, that's the best product we have for that. And we have five sessions. We have those on Sundays also. And Mr. Wilkins comes and, and teaches this on a concept at campus. Now, I'm sure with, with, with the changes that we've gone through, we, we, we would also be offering these classes online, you know, very soon. So again, the certification program is meant for you to prepare your knowledge, get you the knowledge in project management, uh, get you to the skills that you need to get, get to know a lot of, uh, you know, professionals in the net network, and then also applying for the exams and passing them through. This is a pretty rigorous task for anyone to follow through but you know what <laughs> i can tell you one thing i will recommend a student to go for a project management certification rather than recommending a student to go complete an mba mba are very expensive programs mbas are a lot of mbas in the market this is the field that gets you to the the, the job level the, the level of you know employment that you, you're looking for and continuously going through the progress that you would make over the years. So that's essentially what we have here, folks, is offering these classes. As I mentioned to you, we offer these classes on different dates, different times, and it's up to you to join. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So the registration process is very easy. Uh, we have students who have gone online, registered the, you know, for the classes. Uh, we, we, like I said, we have five terms, uh, 900, 901, 902, 903, and 904. And after each term, when you go and sign up for the next term, and uh, students, we, we request them to go for that. Now, we, we also provide some more conveniences, and that is to make sure that if you have not been able to attend a class, let's say you were in my class on Saturday, and you would come to me and say, I cannot attend a certain class. We, we recommend you to go and make up for that class uh, in sitting in, in Mr. In, uh, Wilkins' class. So you can make that up. And you don't, don't lose that time, right? 
you do not lose the the the, the, the certification that you want to get you know as soon as possible and you want to make sure that you have that flexibility uh we recommend you that you stay with one instructor we are both unique people we both have unique ways of teaching and we both enjoy teaching the way we do we have a fan of students i have close to about 34 3500 uh connections on linkedin these are all coming from my 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 you know passion for teaching and knowing uh you know the 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 other the other industries besides the aerospace so if you have any questions let's start to address them uh let, let, let's take some most frequently asked questions so this is how do i get project uh, how do i get hired as a project manager without project manager certification it's really hard now companies are now asking candidates to have this credentials before they apply in fact it's got really tough that people who have been working as a project manager and do not have the certification the employers are making conditional employment to say you know within one year you need to pass this exams and i have taught so many students by now i do know i, I can go back and tell you stories that will take you hours and hours to understand but the fact is that we do have now the market that's very competitive question number uh, uh, point number three is there homework yes we both provide you with homework uh, in fact you will see when you get to my class you will see all of my assignments are posted on blackboard and there we would make sure that you understand the, the the assignment and how can you apply that in real world we talk about the the cases we talk about you know how things are managed in the industry and we also talk about if you haven't learned it you know we, we we always try to bring you back the knowledge that you have i have actually sat here on my own computer uh, uh, you know using my own time if a student tells me dr gay i need to go for my pmp exam in about less than three weeks can you help me and i have helped students in doing that my point to you is that please make sure that you have that passion and since there is no grading and there is no you know a b or c you all you have to do is attend the classes now i, I have a very <laughs> strong passion for teaching so you will get more than you ask for being in my class uh how many textbooks do you need to buy as i mentioned to you you come to my class you don't need to buy any textbook because i provide you with all of that textbooks are expensive folks i come from a culture where we didn't spend this much money to get through the colleges so i do appreciate that the fact is that when you are ready to go on the exam then i recommend to say okay this is the textbook to go for but while you're taking the classes your slides all of your slides or your powerpoint presentation slides your pdf files examples or you know textbook examples from several authors just not one author you get all that from us and and i do provide that to you before you come to the class so you can benefit from that uh if you have a schedule conflict with one of the days i just mentioned to you that you will have uh to make that up let us know in advance to say you know i cannot make up this class i cannot attend this class on a certain day can you please allow me to go and make up a class and we, we always very open we we usually recommend students not to change so much because again i say it, we have a different style and different approach in the way we teach uh, when do i get certification well for every class that you every term you complete you will have that at the end we go through so at, at the end of every term which when i say term meaning five weeks really uh, the maximum right you will get a, a, a credit no credit you will be able to see that you can take to your employer you can actually ask for reimbursement uh, even we have programs where we have supported uh, people who are in between jobs and they they need to show a proof to the you know the employment department edd uh, we also offer you with, with with the flexibility that you want to go and, and and complete your exam the point here is that you will get certification after every term you have completed 
and then you will get certification when you completed all the classes. So that was, you know, a few, few of the most common questions. How much does it cost? Uh, I can tell you one thing. I have taught classes at UC schools, UCR, UCI. I taught at UCI for seven years. I taught UCLA only for one year because the distance I only taught at UCR for one, one, one year. But the fact is that we are the lowest in terms of cost. Even when you compare with Cal State LA or Cal State Long Beach, because those I've taught at those schools too. The, the, the cost is very competitive. And without me saying much to you, you can actually see the cost uh, as you can see the schedule. We have a website created and there it shows you the fees and the number of classes you have to attend. Uh, can you switch between the classes? We say do it infrequently. Because once you start with certain, you know, way of learning, you will come back to us and say, you know, Dr. Gay, uh, I, I should have stayed with you, at least not to not to change so abruptly. But that's that's the way it works. You have to change your timing because of your family needs or your job needs. We understand that. Uh, you can certainly register online. The first registration, I believe, is to be done uh, by contacting school. Uh, are these programs offered online. Yes, in fact, that's exactly what we're doing now. <laughs> Believe it or not, the first Saturday class I taught online was just last Saturday. You can come and audit and sit in my class on Saturday, then you will understand, you know, and appreciate the, the, the passion and the, the depth of knowledge I want to take you to. And then, then you can make up your mind, says, yeah, I want to come to your classes. Now, this is something that the school decides. We don't decide that management university leadership decides that in our case now that most of the classes have gone online we have to make sure that we follow that but for now we are offering that class all these classes online so if you were to start the, the pmx 900 classes you know uh 900 most likely we will be online uh next slide please nisa so where you can find all these uh <clears throat> The information from uh, the first the first one is basically our school's website that's where you're going to find you just click on that link you're going to find all the different classes the different terms we offer them and especially whenever we say dash 82 we mean to say it's offered at Redondo Beach and Redondo Beach we have a small I mean we are part of a, a, a medical center and we have two classrooms there and we, we meet there Again, the passion, the level of passion isn't less or more. It's just the same amount of students, uh, but the uh, I mean, same amount of passion whether we have 10 students or we have 25 students. Uh, my director, I spoke to her today, and I was going to ask all of you to say, and this is before we I start taking questions from you, is it okay for you to consider any night but Tuesday night? And here's the reason why I'm saying that. I'm currently teaching Cal State Dominguez Operations Management Tuesday class. I usually teach on, almost every night. But for this term, we start, let's say, two weeks from now, because there would be a spring break next week. If you would like to join, would you consider joining us on Wednesday night? Again, it would be online, so you wouldn't have to drive place for a while, and you wouldn't have to go and, and, and pay for the parking, and you'd be staying home and you'll be going through this interactive way of understanding uh, the, the, the knowledge areas. Okay, now I'm ready to take the question from the students, or at least the participants. Okay, so. We have unmuted all of the mics, so if anybody has a question, feel free to ask it. And by the way, uh, as, she's, as she mentioned, the, the, these are record, this is recorded session, and all of my classes, I record them. So when you go and come online, you can always listen to, you know, if you miss something. So I'm, I'm ready to take questions from you, uh, folks. If you have any questions, let's, let's go and, and ask questions, please. I hope you can all or at least someone can can talk and, and you should be in a position to talk, right? Or simply type the question on the chat box and I'll be very happy to answer that. I'm not sure if I missed questions while I was talking. 
So let's see. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Magdalena. Does anyone have any questions? I do actually. I went to the link. This is Diana. Can you hear mm -hmm. me? Yes. Uh -huh. um, I went to the link that you provided where it would kind of break down the course costs. Um, let's see. And when I selected, which one should I be selecting out of the three main areas? So I'm going to switch over so we can see the project information. Can you guys see our screen here? Yes. So the three programs that Dr. Anamdar was referring to is the project management certificate, the um, Microsoft project scheduling class, and the exam prep for CAPM and PMP. So just depending on which of those programs you were interested in, if you're just getting started in project management, you'll click on the first one for project on management first certificate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once you're there, you'll see course descriptions, schedules and costs, and an FAQ. And the current schedule, as it stands at the moment, is listed online here. Um, please do be aware that, uh, of course, with the, the times that we're living in right now, um, scheduling information, we might have some updates from time to time. But basically for this program, everything is currently up to date in terms of um, the online access and where it's being um, provided and so on. Okay. Okay. So can you please, uh, please, for a second. Uh, th th sure. Just, yeah. Thank you so much. If you can mm -hmm. scroll up a little bit where I can explain to our students. So let's say, let's say you have Monday, Thursday schedule, or let's say you have Saturday schedule. So let's say we started, I started teaching class on the 1st of February, as you can see, it's a PMX 900, right? So the PMX 900, we had nine to four o'clock. In one session, we completed PMX 900, right? Okay. Now, when we go to the next session, which is after the second week, we will be there for five weekends, five Saturdays, each from nine o'clock in the morning to, to noon. By the way, when I'm in the classroom, I have brought donuts for 10 solid years. This is, <laughs> this is the only time I brought donuts or in food. My students were just saying, hey, Dr. Gay, where are my food? Where is my donut? Where are my, you know, my, 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 the, 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 the things that we would like to nibble while we're learning the, the concept from you. So the 901 is basically PMX 901. We talk about the project resource management and procurement. Procurement is talking about the contract management and so forth. Then we go into what we call PMX 902, which is then project quality management, which, which we just started last Saturday and because the dates have, have, have changed now. And, and so we will go on for PMX 902, 902 for five more weeks, right? And then we will have the PMX 903, which would be starting April 18th and we'll go on to the May 9th. There's, there's a, a class that will be meeting one day for long. If we have a, uh, you know, a, na a national holiday coming here, for example, it would be Memorial Day, then we will do that. And then we'll obviously move into PMX 904, and then we'll go into the, nine, uh, the, the five, five classes we'll have that. So the, the last class, or the last term, should I say, PMX 904, is one of the most important uh, classes we teach because it's about project schedule management and cost management. If you ever go into the industry and apply for a project management job, and if you just tell them that I have the knowledge of schedules and costs, they will be so excited to get you on board. <laughs> so we, we, the way we teach you is, is, is really a very compressed schedules, but if you really wanna go apply for an exam, this is what we do after these classes are over. Then you come for say, you know, you want to go for the the, the prep classes, right? Now, uh, let's see the classes that we. I was just talking to you about the PMX Honor Four. Uh, we would be completing that, and then I'll start the new cycle. Uh, same thing goes with Mr. Wilkins. He does start the cycle. He teaches on 
two separate days. He teaches on, on, on Mondays and Thursdays, right? And then he would have the classes he will finish and, and you can complete those classes in that time frame. So I hope that helps you. It does, thank you. But there, is there also, I might have missed it, but you said, is there something that just lays out the cycle? Like the very first class to the very last class so you could just kind of check it off. Do you have something like that? Is, is it just the description at the bottom that I'm following? Right, so, so what we usually ask for all of you to say, and this will help you, you must finish a PMX 900 first, right? So you, you must finish a PMX 900 first. Then you can take 901, 902, 903, 904, and any sequence would permit you. Because the 900, it's the intro class, and that's an overview of project management. Without that, you will not be able to understand the rest of the classes. Therefore, we always make sure that our students, unless the student has come from the background in the industry that they know about project management, then we kind of wave it and say, okay, you can start from PMX 901. But remember one thing, by completing these classes, you're earning credit units, right? And so therefore, when you're earning credit units, they are coming from PMI. So when you say I have earned so many credit units, then you will be able to get, you will be able to get the permission to go for the, uh, apply for the exam. So let's say 15 hours equals to 1.5 units, credit units, and, and that comes from PMI. So at the end, when you complete all of these, you will get certification from Project Management Institute. So that's the sequence we go. Any other questions? How many, how many uh, participants do we have online right now? Um, right now we have eight. Eight, okay. okay. Well, are there any questions from anyone else? Let me, let me see the, the list of the, the attendees. Uh, sure, you have access as well. Sure. Yeah, well, yeah, just usually don't bother, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're working with that. But uh, so those who, are, can I ask a question to, to all of you? How many of you are working in the project management field? Okay, we have H. King is. How many of you are looking for a job right now? And please don't hesitate. This is where we want to know and, and understand that your needs are, right? So, you know, if, if you can say, it, you can say it privately or you can say, it. so uh, it'll help you to understand the, the uh, benefits of taking these, these classes. So therefore, I would assume the rest of you are working in the field where project management is not a part of the tool that you use or? Something? Correct, I, I am not. This is Diana again. I, I do not have any project management. Well, I done it, but without knowing. <laughs> After talking to a few people, they basically said, you know, have, do you have your PMI or do you have some sort of associated degree in it? And I don't. So I just thought it would be something beneficial for the type of work that I do, or right. perhaps to move forward with another opportunity. So this is a perfect time for you to, to, to get that knowledge, right? And, and like, as I said, that we've been teaching these classes and we've had seen a good success from our students. Uh, to get that complete knowledge, also, let me also explain to you what is happening. PMI changes the, the, the guide, we call it PMBOK, every four years. So at the end of this year, this fiscal year, this calendar year, rather not calendar year, they will then say, starting new year, we will go and adapt new, new version, new edition of project management body of knowledge, and that would change the exam. Also, I would be able to cite you examples where project management institute is saying that from here on, starting next year, the exams will be much more comprehensive that would cover both what we call the waterfall and the agile project management. So it would become harder for students to, to pass through that. 
I have been telling students to say, if you want to pass, this is a year to go pass, which you can only pass once you have completed these courses, right? How about if I were to offer you this? On Saturday, if you'd like to be, if you like to audit the class, you will see about 24, 25 students in my class, which would all be on, online. Uh, I can send you the link and I can invite you to attend the class and, and you can see what goes on and you decide that, you know, you would like to join the classes or not. I would like that very much. Okay. So how many more uh, participants we have, have, uh, let's see. So we have, by the way, how are you all doing all these days uh, with uh, the completely changed environment? We have a student or the participant by Baran is a guest. Then we have- That's, a that's Diana. Mm -hmm. Diana, okay. Then we have a student by the name of Desha. Yes, this is she. I was waiting for you to finish up. Um, I work in the, the medical field on the, the network management side. And it was actually my director who um, kind of transitioned my current role as a program policy analyst more into project management. Um, but the issue was that a lot of people at my company, for some reason, they don't have a PMP. So I wanted to do the class to kind of learn the, the basics the right way. So that way when I do um, transition, because they did put in my request to change me to a project manager, I, I have a, a good foundation of what to do and how to do it. And that, that's exactly what we teach you, right? Yeah. Uh, we have a students that come from healthcare industry and many of them, they go back and we, what we call is they start with the PMO, which is usually called project management body, uh, office. And that's where we create all the templates and all the standard procedures and so forth. And so, you know, many companies today, healthcare companies, they're starting the PMOs. And most of the students who come to our classes, they go back and very happily start the PMO process. So yes, that would be very useful for you. In fact, those companies who have barely started to put emphasis on these companies, you may be ahead of time say, okay, I have that education now, I have the background, and perhaps you may have even passed the exam. So it would be very useful for you. Yes, thank you. You're most welcome. Anybody else? Uh, we have a student or participant by the name of H. King. Uh, hello? Yes. Okay, I had to I unmute it. I, my question is, is I do have experience in the project management field. I currently work for a construction management company. Yeah. So I'm very familiar um, with the PM field. The reason why I wanted to take the class is because I do want to take the exam and uh, don't you have to take these classes to get the credit along with your experience to apply for the exam? Right, so we have a class Again, I will be very happy to invite you on my Sunday class. On Sundays, we have 13 students right now. They are taking the PMP prep exam classes. And more they get into it, more they learn, more happier they are. And by God, you know, going through the entire Sunday, I mean, it's like seven hours of extensive training and, and getting to know about the content of the exam. They, they learn a lot. So my, my, my point to you is that you, since you have that background, getting the formal credit units from the school and the PMI, you will be then able to apply for the exam. Now you got to remember one thing that you, you have to show for both CAPM and PMP, you have to take formal classes. And in the first case, the CAPM requires you to have 23 hours, which is, you know, you divide that by how many hours each session we, class we spend, but the PMP requires 35. And you would, you could be one of those candidates. So, you know, again, I'd be very happy to offer you and, and my my email should be here on this presentation. Contact me. Uh, okay. Today is Tuesday. All of you, any one of you, please come to my class. Audit the class. Uh, you can listen. Tell me after three hours because I just asked, asked my students the first time we, we completed the online class on Saturday. I said, please rank this, you know, your experience about going on online classes. What do you think the students were saying on a scale one to 10? They, they were all happy. And my point to you is not a point of bragging. It, it comes from a lot of years of experience. 
And when student is speaking, all of a sudden we start engage ourselves into understanding the needs. I have gone and taught classes through our school and other schools to private you know, companies. So we also know that part also. So, you know, my, my point to you is that come and audit the class, you know, ask for information from our school. And uh, she, uh, here, here we go. The, the email is here, K-I-N-A-M-D-A-R at C-S-U-D-H dot E-D-U. That's my formal email address. You can send it to me. I'll, I'll be very happy to invite you. Then you decide. Okay. So, but if I do sign up for the prep class, will I not still need these courses to, to yeah. uh, for, okay. the, for the education side? Yes, and you asked a very good question. The prep classes are meant to prepare you for the exam, right? Correct. With the formal understanding that our student has gone through all these classes before and they have learned, in fact, they have made the criteria that says, you know, you must have completed the fundamental classes in all these 10 knowledge areas before you sign up for the class. So my, my, my request to all of you is to say, please, yes. So do not think that, Getting into the prep classes is going to get you credit hours. It, it does not. We, we do not provide that. So, and I've been teaching these classes on campus for a while. So my point to you is that please make sure that you, you understand these concepts very clearly. Again, you can send me an email directly. I'd be very happy to provide you. I have usually asked students who are willing to go for a PMP exam. I usually ask them to say, take away all your personal information from your, from your resume send it to me in less than 10 minutes i'll be able to tell you whether you qualify for the pmp exam or not simple right <laughs> so i encourage you strongly to come and join these classes any anyone else has any other questions okay anybody has any different thoughts about when do you would like to start the classes or is it one week two weeks three weeks how, mu how much time can you wait or would you like to wait Well, now with everything being online, uh, I possibly can enroll a lot faster. I was waiting for the July classes on Saturdays, but yeah. since we're online, I'm, I'm going to look into enrolling a lot sooner. Yeah, yeah and you do. And, and the fact is that, you know, uh, we have online classes now. I cannot, I can, I do not have the full knowledge to say how long would we continue these classes online, but I could tell you one thing, that regardless whether you come online or you come in face-to-face, -face, uh, students have enjoyed taking classes both ways. So uh, right now, most of the universities, in fact, all the universities have gone online. So, you know, we, we avoiding the content. So Perfect. any other questions? Okay, well, if you do not have any questions, feel free to contact me, contact school, contact our, our registration office. They will direct the questions to me and uh, look forward to seeing you in the future very soon. Thank you everybody for joining and uh, keep an eye out on your email for follow-up announcements and information regarding this recording. Have a wonderful evening and everybody stay safe. You too. Good night. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.